Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of NBS Radio. It's actually been a minute, so today I am joined by uh, three other lovely individuals from uh, our community here in the North Pacific. That being our Minister of Communications, Ruben. That will be me. Our Speaker of the Regional Assembly, Ara. Um. And our Vice Delegate, Chipoli. Hello there. And of course me, Minister of Defense, and your regularly scheduled radio host. So we've got a pretty stacked panel for you today, and uh, this is going to be our midterm show. Wow, it's really already midterm. This is something that I acknowledged in my ping. It really doesn't feel like it's midterm already, but uh, today is the 11th. And, you know, delegates usually get seated on the 11th or 12th, or rather re-elected in Cash's case. Um, so yeah, from January 11th, 12th-ish, to uh, March. First two months of the term, gone. Midterm. How are we feeling about that, guys, just in general? I mean, it's absolutely crazy, honestly. Time's flying past when you have fun, uh, obviously. Uh, yeah, it's it's been so much fun to serve in cabinet for the first time for me, obviously, because I uh, this is uh, my first time serving as Minister of Communications, and it's been a great experience, and uh, I'm so grateful uh, to Cash for to Cash for uh, giving me this opportunity. Ara, have you been enjoying wielding the gavel? How How is the term going in the Speaker's office? Would you say it's been going quickly, or has it felt like an eternity? I think, uh, yeah, I have enjoyed being the Speaker. I don't think there's been any major disasters yet, which is good. I think it's going smoothly. I'm enjoying. Yeah, speaking as a former Speaker myself, um, that actually is pretty much a good metric of if your term's going okay. When it comes to the regional assembly, a lot of it's very procedural. Like, that's kind of what it's infamous for. And so, like, if there's a huge, I don't know, what's the word, discrepancy or something like that, like, that is usually the thing that's like, oh, yeah, no, let's not do that. Uh, so, I mean, you've avoided those, so we're we're doing pretty good by, like, speaker standards. There was a time in TNP before my time, so definitely before all of your guys' times, uh, but before my time in TNP where... Um, that was like a regular occurrence. Like we had like two or three speakers back to back, like scandal after scandal. And it was just, yeah, very, very not good. So the fact that there's a calm regional assembly, uh, bodes well for you. Oh, Chipotle, how's it going over there in the security council? Well, I'd say it's been going relatively well. It's always a pleasure to sort of disturb the North Pacific. And I'm excited to build off. Uh, what, we, what we've done in the first half of the term to make it an even better second half of the term. So yeah, I think I'm quite excited for the future. Yeah, I think as we all are, um, you know, I have always been a pretty strong proponent of cash. And I mean, we still have him in the chair and he's still able to do things that I think that's... Uh, a particularly good thing for TNP at the moment because, you know, obviously I wouldn't have uh, voted to re-elect him if I didn't think that that's what we needed. So it's good to see that. Um, I know there's been like some regional events slash like happenings, which we're going to get into in this episode. Uh, but to begin, I kind of wanted to go like ministry by ministry and just kind of give a little bit of like progress slash like recaps, like how stuff's been going. Um, So in... No particular, like, alphabetical order, I would say. I don't, I'm not really going to do the whole alphabetical order thing. Uh, but we do have the ministries. Um, and I think the first one that comes, like, alphabetically, I said no alphabetical order. I just lied to you already. Uh, I think the first one that comes, I think the first one that comes alphabetically, isn't it communications? Yes, I do think. We'll turn that over to you because that's your wheelhouse this term. Well, thank you very much. Well, uh, communications is in a pretty uh, pretty strong position, I'd say. Um, we are currently, uh, you know, uh, making uh, the, what is it now, February edition of uh, the North Star, which is almost done. It'll be released uh, in a couple of days, which uh, is very exciting. Um, yeah. We have been uh, consistently releasing uh, Northern Notes uh, 
publications and yeah it's going pretty strong so far the northern broadcast server uh, surface has been uh, doing pretty good work although it's been a little bit more quiet than i had hoped but that was also because of uh, a couple of uh, technical difficulties that we uh, experienced um, and lost recordings and everything like that but uh, that's not a very big issue in my opinion I think we're still doing great. Uh, Pickern is actually, uh, I put Pickern in, in uh, charge of uh, the North Star, at least his uh, issue, and he's been doing great work as uh, executive editor, uh, which was my primary goal for him, at least, uh, this term to really get him um, started and uh, really give him responsibility in terms of, uh, you know, jobs in the in the ministry to really set him up for the future, uh, which I'm very excited uh, about. Yeah, um, I was, And other than that, everything's been growing, going uh, pretty smoothly, I'd say. Nothing major, but uh, no uh, terrible inactivity either. So, yeah, communications is in a pretty solid place, I think. Um, even though I've been a little bit more busy because I'm in my final year of high school, and my final exams before I uh, go to uni, hopefully, uh, are in literally two months. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I'm obviously pretty busy with my uh, real life. But luckily, I have a strong team and a great delegate who uh, help me out whenever I need it. So, yeah, in terms of uh, activity, we're going pretty strong because of our great teamwork. And I'm just incredibly proud of what my ministry has accomplished so far. And uh, I'm very excited to see what we're going to do next. I was definitely going to give Picard a shout out because I know that he's an absolute workhorse in communications. Uh, And he's the same for us over in defense. He kind of just like moved with me when I moved over to communications uh, (laughs) from, you know, to defense. Uh, But I know he's very active in both ministries. And I think it's great that, like, we credited him as far as being, like, the executive editor of TNS. I think he's, you know, obviously taken to that role just as he has pretty much anything that you throw at him. Um, uh, the only thing I was going to say, Ruben, is that he's not going to be happy to hear how you pronounce his name. I think you said, I don't know what you said, but I say Pickern. Like, I, I pronounce it. Yeah, I see. Oh, I say Pickern. Yeah, uh, Pickern. I'm not sure about that. Is it, is it Pickern? I think it's, I don't know. I think it's Pickern. I don't know, because, like, I don't know if it's, like, French or something, because I know he has this French theme going on with his uh, uh, profile. This uh, is a bad so. look for us. This guy's been around doing yeah. great work, and we're just like, huh, how do we pronounce his name? Um, yeah. You know, I assure you, I assure you, yeah, we're we're doing okay. Yeah, I, no, I, I'll, I'll just uh, stick to Picker, and, and uh, I'll, uh, I'll... I'll notice when he uh, starts screaming at my DMs. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I just wanted to make sure he gets his credit too, because even though he's not a minister this term, I have no doubt it's going to happen in the future. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be well-deserved because he's one of the primary, like when you think of the executive staff right now, one of the main like driving forces behind it, you think of him. So I just want to go ahead and give him his credit there. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I don't want to get too much into speculation here, but you know, if I, could if i would you know die tomorrow or something or like get hit by a bus i would uh 100 percent endorse pickard as my uh, successor at least uh uh, you wouldn't like right now you wouldn't endorse him after the bus x well i mean endorse him now maybe i would from heaven jesus that's terrible that's terrible (laughs) you've gone too far um (laughs) but this is a that is a wild analogy that's certain yeah that oh my god (laughs) Let us clear it quickly. We'll cut really? this out. We'll cut this out. No, no, we won't. Um, <laughs> why are we talking about bus accidents now? It's, like, it's, it's a terrible look. It's, it's like, oh my god, what happened to the NBS? We just start talking about tragic bus accidents. No. Um, yes. All right. So, uh, moving on from the you know death, but due to vehicular <laughs> manslaughter, oh, uh, we can <laughs> <laughs> we can move on to color. Culture is one of those areas where um, usually, you know, there might be some big things that the term is kind of tailored around, but for the most part, we've seen 
uh a theme thursday especially or like events like that like music monday theme thursday that's kind of been like the bread and butter of it which i would say is fairly consistent with uh, last term's performance i know that uh the way that cash and i worked it out the northern chess league aka the ncl is presented by the ministry of culture so that can kind of fall under culture's umbrella uh i know that nutmeg does like the monthly culture calendar still so that's something that's been published in dispatch form uh the monthly culture calendar just kind of just let people know what's going on when um and you know culture is one of those ministries where we say it all the time but like anything is regional culture it really is like here in tnp we have a very strong sense of like our unique culture um for better or for worse um and you know it's something that comes through obviously in our ministries but just in the activities that we do on a day-to-day basis you know how we talk to each other in the ra which i'm sure ara has something to say for as far as decorum goes um but uh, you know or you know just how we you know basically come together to do events like the twp tnp in a regional chess arena that we did there was a third event that we just did uh, with them, which will be um, written about in an article with the upcoming TNS that Ribbon mentioned. Uh, we're going to do a recap on some of the chess events that we've been going on because, yeah, TNP has done chess for like a decent amount of this first half of the term. And a lot of that kind of does have its origins in culture. So shout out to Nutmeg on that front, our Minister of Culture. Uh, and then moving on, I think the next one alphabetically would be defense. And that's kind of going to be me. So. I will talk about defense for a bit. Yeah, take it away. Yeah, yeah as if I hadn't been talking already. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> defense, uh, it's one of those areas where, especially in a wartime environment, you really need like a strong defense. Uh, so, of course, given the nod from Cash, I think that was a decent move for me. Obviously, I, I was previously Minister of Defense back in like 2019, but I hadn't been in the position for a while. I'd still been active in the NPA. Um, I just had been Minister of Defense for a while. So yeah, I'm Minister of Defense again. We've had uh, a number of operations done so far. I think we've done Valdosta. We've done the Fash Bash, which is like hellish something of abyssal torment. I can't remember the entire regional name. It's like hellish blank of abyssal torment. That was another region that we hit as part of a Fash Bash with uh, the West Pacific Armed Forces. I know that we've done a number of anti-BOM, like BOM, anti-TBH uh, detag where literally the entire time we would just detag specifically those targets, uh, regions tagged by BOM, regions tagged by TBH. I know there's some Sparkalia that we did tagged also. Uh, we did those with our friends from the Legio Pacifica, aka the NPO, uh, New Pacific Order for those of you who, you know, need the acronym help. Um, and of course, the West Pacific Armed Forces, we've been working with them as far as our. You know, Pax Polaris Salsidentis. Is that how you say it? PPO, Pax Polaris Salsidentis. I'm not Latin. Uh, no one is. Probably something like, that looks like of years. No one's Latin. But uh, <laughs> yeah, no, we, we've been working with our PPO partners to uh, do both fast passes and anti BOM stuff as far as DTEC goes. And then uh, more recently is the hold of Warzone Trinidad. Uh, which I will say is has been going well. It's been going as planned. Uh, we've been able to eliminate the Raider embassies um, that Warzone Trinidad held, replacing it with our own in Lunar Punk. Uh, we've kind of done a rebranding of sorts. Uh, we are the legitimate government of Warzone Trinidad, I will have you know, for freedom and democracy. Uh, please endorse your chief executive officer, a.k.a. me, and your chief operating officer, a.k.a. Picaren. As well as your EVP, uh, Nutbag, and you, you just kind of go down the list. We all kind of gave ourselves uh, wonderful businessy titles, which is, you know, <laughs> probably the most we're going to get promoted, like, compared to real life. I mean, uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, no. I really love that theme, actually. Like, uh, yeah, that's cheers a to uh, that's a whoever thing. thought of that and who yeah. designed the flags and stuff. Oh, it was really fun. So it was really kind of cool. a collaborative effort. The flag was designed by Karen. The banner was designed by Cash. The WFE was designed by me. One of the things I liked from my last term as MOD, we did a raid on a region called New Western Atlantic, a.k.a. the NWA. And for those of you who are in the know, the NWA 
um, is also the name of a hip hop group from the nineties, very influential hip hop group. So, uh, we did like a play on words where each member of the NPS high command became like somebody from the NWA instead of like, uh, you know, ice cube, we had ice coop for Koopa or instead of quiet or instead of Dr. Dre, we had quiet Dre for quiet dad back when he was in high command. And for, you know, at the time we had. Uh, General Darkania. So instead of Arabian Prince, we had Darkanian Prince. And so we just did like parodies like that. And it was a really fun thing that everyone, like everyone liked it. So for this raid, yeah, that's something I wanted to bring back. Like, what if we all just become these like really BSE like corporate titles? You know, like we have somebody from the ERN who is the director of assets and risk management. What does that mean? I mean, it's just like in the business world. What does that mean? Um, and I, I think it's a really cool way to like get people engaged with raids and just have fun with it because at the end of the day, yeah, we're prosecuting a war, but that doesn't mean that it can't be fun along the way. And that's something I was really looking to. So yeah, I've enjoyed this raid. I think it's gone well and I do enjoy the theming of it. I will say that like monochrome WFE that you see, is that monochrome? What is it called? No, not monochrome. I'm thinking of a different word. It's like It's like where it fades into a different color. I don't know the word for that. Um, that WFE, I have a tool to do that for me, right? And it was still a pain. Um, <laughs> so I hope you guys, Jesus. I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, because I literally spent time working on that. Uh, so yeah, it's been going well. And then I know that in the, you know, so far, even though I think everyone's pretty happy within the NPA, as far as the direction that we're going, I know that the next two months we're still going to have stuff going on as well that uh, there's plenty to get excited about. So I'm happy from that angle. Um, and that kind of wraps it up for defense. At least everything I can say right now because, you know, OPSEC and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, we got to we gotta keep these streets clean, you know, with some of our T-tags. One, one thing that I will say was kind of funny. I will make mention of this. I guess they are getting free clout. I'm not going to say their name. I don't even know who they are. But I know that after the war zone, Trinidad raid, there was a nation that telegrammed me and asked why TNP doesn't just come out and say that we're defenders, which I thought was especially ironic considering we just raided a region and were exempted to do like destructive actions on a region that we can't normally do. So we were doing like the most raider thing possible, and yet their immediate retort was, But you're defenders. Um, so I thought that was funny. I don't know, maybe that was just me. Maybe no one else gets it, but I thought that was funny. No, you... Yeah, I mean, it's it's incredibly hilarious how so many people uh, are still gaslighting themselves into thinking that we're a defender region when we literally just raided uh, Guys. a war zone. Like what? <laughs> I mean, war zones. Uh, war zones were made to kill raiding anyway. But whatever. That's yes. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, oh, they're doing what I like to call pooping and seeping. Um, I think you, I think you guys have heard of that, but yes, they're coping very hard. But we have scored another victory in the battlefield, and yeah, no, uh, good job to the to the NPA. Yeah, um, you know, I just I just want to reiterate. Yeah, no, we're not defenders. I'm personally not a defender, and I'm kind of the person, except for Cash, who has say so. I, I actually I shouldn't even say kind of. Uh, yeah, I, I, I run the military and I'm not a defender. So why would I run a defender military? The answer is I would, um, honestly, anyone else who is kind of like deluding themselves and think, but anyway, that's besides the point. Next up is foreign affairs. Oh, what's been going on in foreign affairs? Spill the tea. <laughs> you're the deputy minister. Yeah. You're the minister of defense. You would tell me. Well, Foreign Affairs has been doing great, as far as I'm aware. Um, we're doing, uh, you know, solid work. Uh, the analyst um, channel is less active than I would have liked it to be, uh, which was a new idea, or, well, not really new, but it was an idea that uh, ComFed thought of to uh, create a more Watch-esque uh, culture, uh, which I had already started on um, last term, which was pretty successful, but it's died out, sadly. 
uh, our ambassadors are doing great work. Um, I still regularly get pings uh, from the ambassador. Um, what what's it called? Ambassador thread where they like report on stuff. Uh, so yeah, that's doing solid work. Um, I'm not sure if we've signed any new treaties. I don't think so. Um, but yeah, everything's uh, going great on that front. As far as I know, and as far as I can share, I'm pretty sure you would know if we signed new treaties because we'd have to approve it in the array. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, uh, so I don't think we did. No, unless we're just all like suffering from really short term memory. Well, I mean, I am, but you know, maybe not everything or everyone here. That happens so to me with like NS events. Oh yes, absolutely. Actually, this is kind of a pivot away from the executive, but it is something I kind of like to give everyone more of an opportunity to talk when we do panels like this. So I'm just going to call upon people. Haha, <laughs> no anxiety. Uh, Ara, how are the Regional Assembly Digests going? Because what what, this, what made me think of this is Foreign Affairs used to do like the ambassador distribute. Well, they still do. The ambassador distributions, like when we publish a new TNS or something, like they'll get it out to all the other regions. And I was just thinking, aha, oh, there's another publication that has been put out this term. That's kind of like a newer thing we've done. Um, and that would just be the Regional Assembly Digest. I've seen Picard posting those. I've seen you post those. How's that going? Yeah, well, um, Picard slash Picard um, has done a very good job at redesigning it because the first two editions, I used the old um, template from, from um, the kind of old theme from a few years back. Now we're kind of moving towards the design that Picken has been um, using in his stuff. But um, yeah, they're going well. I think there's room for improvement in making them a bit more engaging, but that will come. Um, they're kind of intended as just a just a roundup, really. And also, and I and I also thought that it would um, help to encourage new citizen, new people, new. Um, people to uh, apply for citizenship because they can see that the regional assembly is actually something that does stuff. Yeah, the regional assembly is the place that does stuff. On the design front, I mean, Picard is also helpful there. Like, like again, I'm not, I'm not even overstating this. Uh, we designed another one of those like infographic things for the Ministry of Defense this term uh, that can be promoted on like the RMB or basically wherever else you want to promote it. And I like infographics in the sense that, number one, they're more visually appealing, especially the way that Garn makes them. But number two, instead of linking someone like this, you know, hundreds of words dispatch of like, here, read this. This is all what we're doing. You know, some people are maybe, you know, not as literate as others. So we can just like give them a thing or it's just like the bullet point version, the TLDR, if you will. And it just works out. And I kind of like that. Um, I think it works out well. The regional assembly digest, I would imagine, is helpful in the sense that like, you can at new nations. I say at, but you know what I mean. Like mention, you can you know welcome new nations to the region. And it's like, oh yeah, here you go. You know, but uh, I think they like that. I think that's good. But yeah, foreign affairs. Uh, I kind of did like a little detour to the RA, kind of to get you some uh, real estate on this broadcast. <laughs> uh, and, feel, the and by the detour. way, to both of you guys, feel free to chime in. Whatever you know, Ruben and I can't hog it all, but. Um, I think as far as foreign affairs go, it's one of those things that, yeah, it's going to be a very important uh, area. Just on, it always is, but like, especially in wartime, it's one of those things, um, that, you know, usually you don't see a lot of its moves like happen out in public and for good reason, for good reason. Um, but you know, you really only get to see like the full scope of like what happens in a foreign affairs term, even like months after the fact. So I wonder if that's something that we'll see here. Uh, and if I'm wrong, then I'm wrong. But if I'm right, then I prophesize. Oh, that was, a, that was something else I forgot to mention about defense, by the way. I'm so organized, as you can tell. Uh, defense, <laughs> defense was doing, we announced this at the RA and we announced this at the RA so that people didn't like freak out. Um, Chipotle can speak on this, which is what made me think of it, is the NPA is going to be conducting drills with some of our border control officers from the Security Council, which isn't something that we normally do. But in, you know, response to the recent, like, Dell tip incident of August, 
Is that almost a year? Oh my god, it's almost a year. Well, not almost a year. I guess we got a good half a year left. And the attack on Europe, which is a lot more recent. Uh, we got to beef up internal security, you know, get these SCRs working. Uh, and so far, you know, I think this has been a great opportunity to, number one, increase communication between the NPA's high command and the Security Council. That's not really uh, an avenue of communication that you often see. A lot of the communication to the SC goes through the vice delegate. Um, but this is another way that we've been doing it to basically communicate directly to our border control officers, get them familiar with what they need to be familiar with as far as, you know, the game mechanics, R&D and stuff is concerned. And I think both sides so far have, like, learned a bit about, like, uh, what our approach to regional security at home is. And I think it's been productive in that sense, even before the first drill has been fired off. For those of you who are wondering, like, when's the first drill going to be? Uh, number one, we've had all our numbers in Warzone Trinidad right now. So when we get down with Warzone Trinidad, it should be relatively soon. Just, I mean, it, it doesn't really tip off anyone if I say relatively, because that can mean anything. Um, we'll probably move on to that at some point. And I know that one of the border control officers was kind of on more of like a leave of absence for some reason. Uh, not specifying who, but I think that was another reason we didn't do it like immediately. But yes, it is still coming. We haven't forgot about it. There is a reason I put out that PSA. Um, so we're definitely going to be doing that within these next two months of the term. Absolutely. That's just another activity that the NBA is doing, increasing security at home and cleaning up the streets uh, abroad. One day a real rain's got to come and clean these streets up. You know what I'm saying? Um. But yeah, law and order. Law and order delegate. Ka is, is we must maintain law and order. Is Kashovia our law and order delegate? That's the question. Big question. Absolutely. He's not going to, I mean, I don't know how familiar how he is with American politics, but he's not going to like that. <laughs> he's going to be like, no. Um, next up, AJ. Picard is also hugely involved in AJ. He's becoming a reoccurring theme of this broadcast. Uh, who's, who's the closest to AJ here? It's not me. Is anyone here? Is anyone here in AJ? Um, I'm not anymore. <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot about that, Ruben. <laughs> are, are you at AJ? I'm a staffer, but I'm, re I'm really not like that. I don't do much. Oh, my God. Well, God. I'm, I mean, I can oh, just like... No, I mean, what I can do is just, like, quickly mask myself and take a look <laughs> at what they've been doing. Yeah, probably don't. Oh, do this that. is terrible. Probably don't do that. Uh, <laughs> or, I don't know, because the most you see of Lion, at least, like, externally facing, is his role as the LGA, which he's fantastic at. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I think, I think the consequence of it being the same person is that sometimes we conflate the two, like LGA versus HA. Uh, and I, I, I've even said before this LG or LGA role has kind of like surpassed his um, Minister of Home Affairs role, which I'm not sure if that's how he feels about it, but I think it might be how some people feel about it, which is not necessarily an indictment of it. I mean, he's been a fantastic LGA. That's why he's in the position. Uh, very good at managing the team of GAers to be as productive as, they, as they've been. Like ever since Cash took office back in, uh, I'm forgetting my dates, September? Yeah, September. Yeah. Was, September of last year. Uh, the Jays have been fantastic and probably even well beyond that. And a lot of it, uh, you know, credit to them individually. I know that everything I've ever, like, you know, popped in the channel, like, hey, can you guys do this? They're always very receptive to that, uh, which I, of course, appreciate. Um, but Lion especially, I know that he does uh, organize them well and kind of make sure that the R&B is covered yeah. as much as possible. So I think he's very effective in that regard. Uh, the fact we can't, you know, say as much about HA doesn't mean that not enough is happening. It just means that as it ha as it so happens, none of us in this panel are in HA, or at least like yeah. To be what I with what's going on with that yeah. As a member of cabinet uh, or as a executive counselor, I can see the resource review uh, channel. Yeah, and I've been I've been seeing some great stuff. Uh, um, you know okay. when uh, how we are redoing. Um, our integration systems and our gigantic uh, dispatch network because it's completely broken. Um, and yeah, I've been seeing some great stuff happening there, and I'm very excited to see what uh, what they uh, cook up next. Yeah, yeah. Do okay. you know? Go ahead. They have introduced a new manual recruitment bot 
which will hopefully oh right that's true that's true which will oh yeah that's a big development because our manual recruitment had been like dead for a while I still yet to get to grips with it which is just slag for I haven't tried it yet but um yeah, I'm uh, and I'm like, yeah, mental, like, I think mentoring is running quite smoothly. That's actually really exciting that we're getting manual recruitment back. Yeah, no. Yeah. Uh, undoubtedly, uh, HE has been doing good work. I popped in th- there once in a while. They're doing a lot um, of redesigning our dispatches. I've seen a lot of, a lot of new designs, designs that excite me. And that are going to make our dispatches look a lot better. And from what I've seen, it's actually been one of the most active ministries, even if most people don't see what's going on behind the scenes, because obviously that's that's most of what AJ does. But I think they've been very consistent, and they're as good as ever. Yeah, amazing. I'd say so. Line still going strong. I know he really likes the job, so hey, we're happy to have him. Moving into uh, the last ministry that we have to talk about, we just crossed the 30 minute mark. So after this ministry, we'll probably do some like closing remarks, keep them, you know, reasonably digestible for you listeners uh, after the fact. And yeah, as well as maybe really- we should also, uh, after that, like ask Chipotle what the security council is doing. Yes, we will do that. Um, that'll be yeah, like another thing because this isn't just about the executive, this is about just like the midterm as far as where the region is at. Yeah, where the government is at. Yeah, which pretty much it's all the branches. We just don't have someone from the court because Ghost has like an actual job, and that's crazy. Yeah, um, and the rest of the court is like dead or something. I mean, there's Elu, but I don't, I don't know if Elu like does NBS. I don't think he does. <laughs> uh but last up, we have the Ministry of World Assembly Affairs with Minister Simone. Uh Okay, one of us has got to be in WA. He asked me at the beginning of this term if I wanted to stay on as deputy minister, and my specific reason for not staying on as deputy minister was actually kind of like twofold. Number one, if I want to like talk about anything WA-related, I'm still a staffer, so I still have the avenues to do so. Also, I could literally just talk to him, like DMs or cabinet or something. Like I don't need to be a deputy minister. And also, too, if I'm going to be doing mostly defense and comms, as I have been, I don't really need to take up a spot that could be going to someone else. Um, that was kind of right. another thing. It's like, I never want to, like, take up an unnecessary spot because if, like, someone else knew where to come along, you know, I was that person at one time, so that would kind of annoy me. So I don't want to be that annoyance for someone else. So that was kind of my... I am de- But, like... You what? We could... I am deputy minister. Oh, I like we could... I mean, like, it's going smoothly. Like, there's, I don't, there hasn't been an introduction of any new, like, scheme or anything, I think. But I don't think we really need that. Scheme system. Maybe. Scheme makes it sound so scandalous. He's like, yeah, we haven't been scheming. We haven't been subverting the WA any time recently. Um, no, I I actually asked Simone to have that talk. That's In preparation for this broadcast, because, yes, I do do a little bit of prep work in order to run these shows. A little bit. Just just a bit. Um, but Simone and I asked him about if there's anything like noteworthy that he want mentioned, uh, in which he said that there's not much for World Assembly Affairs. He said that the main thing uh, is like business as usual, and he said that there is an upcoming event at some point. Hit, hit, there's only really one big WA-related event uh, that's happened. If you know, you know. But, you know, that's been held up due to, you know, other... Uh, organizers being busy, so there's no real fixed date for it yet, but that is something that's being looked at, uh, being done. I'm intentionally being vague so that if they want to announce at some point, they can do so, and I don't like, you know, say anything that they're not ready for me to say. Yeah, but, you know, in WA Affairs, it's mostly business as usual. I think that's something, like, even delegates have campaigned on before, like, getting your IFBs out on time, making sure the delegates stack stomps appropriately, Conducting forum votes, like, that's all something we've seen Simone have absolutely no problem with. So, uh, WFAIRS right now is at least one of those ministries that's chugging along. It doesn't need, like, a huge event to, uh, yeah, what's the word, anger itself. Like, it already is established, obviously. It already is doing things. I know we have, like, a decent team over there. We've got Ara, uh, Simone himself, obviously. I know that Ken Moria is a uh, deputy minister, which... I personally believe that's a huge get. Uh, 
GA Secretariat right there. Also a very good guy. Um, I rate I rate that. Rate uh, big up, big up, Ken Moria. Um, that's a very distinctly British phrase, but I'm not British. <laughs> Sometimes I do. That. Oh, which is ironic considering my nation is French themed. <laughs> yeah, no. So W A R is. I mean, basically, you're the worst of both worlds. Jesus. Uh, okay, <laughs> yeah, well, I wouldn't say that. That's a bit harsh. Guys, T- um, TNP is so, like... Welcoming. It's so, like, multicultural. Amazing. It's so multicultural. Think about it. We have an American... Just in this VC, we have an American who sometimes uses British phrases and has a French-themed nation. Then we have someone from the Netherlands. Then we have someone from the UK... And then we have someone who's also an American, but has is like Ukrainian also. So we're just like everywhere. We're, yeah, we're doing so good, yeah. guys. Hashtag diverse. Amazing. Hashtag diverse. We're all over the place. Yes, <laughs> but you know what shouldn't be all over the place? Regional security. Ah, check that segue. Uh Chipoli. <laughs> uh what's been going on with the Security Council? Is there anything that you wanted to say as far as their activities for this first half of the term? So, luckily, we haven't seen any imminent threats, which is always a good thing. You know, we wanted to, to keep our region safe. I read on the platform of keeping TNP safe, and we have done that so far. So, I do feel like I'm doing my job. Um, yeah, I've, I've gotten the reports out consistently, uh, the bit week reports. Where I've gone out a couple of times. Um, work, I'm working on poaching it more often. And uh, also my platform initiatives as well. I'm working on that behind the scenes. Uh, they're, they're going to come soon. I could promise that. I'm not going to, I'm not going to say when. You know, there has to be an element um, of surprise here. Um, but the yes, I've seen as what goes... Um, behind the closed doors in the war room, you're also uh, welcome to do member to the Security Council of Fredersen. So that's something. If and... you not on the government registry yet, that's going to annoy me. I'm checking right now. He should be, yes. Um, but I think we've done our jobs and started with being smooth sailing. And like I said, we can make the second half of the term even better than the first. Yeah, that kind of gives you a roundup. Uh, Ara, is there anything else you wanted to say for the regional assembly? I know that you've got a group nah, over there with, like, uh, you've got MJ, you've got Sill, you've got... Is Picard? Oh, yeah, Picard's a deputy. Jesus. He's everywhere. And Skyrimorg. Skyrimorg's here. Shout out Skyrimorg. Uh, so, yeah. No. Yeah, it's a nice, it's a nice group of deputies. Because they're all like... Yeah. They're all no, very they're good. good. Well, yeah, I mean, it's a contrast from like the legions of deputies past speakers have had. Yeah, yeah. You this know, is you like know, started that. You know who we have to blame for that? Not me. I was following a trend. I'll have you. It was MJ. It was his fault. There is a. Of course, it was there's a fault. screenshot. There's a screenshot. It's a meme we had. See, we have we have great meme culture here in TNP. There's a screenshot where it had like the provision, the legal provision about how the speaker can appoint as many deputies as they want. And then there's just this huge, like deep fried blown up list of the government registry where it's just all of MJ's deputies at the time. Oh, God. God. If I can find it, I will, um, I will bring it back. But anyway, as this, uh, as this episode has reached, uh, 41 minutes, which I'm sure it'll be cut down due to various editing, uh, we can go ahead and sign off here, since we kind of went through every single ministry, talked about some major events, talked about the Security Council, talked about the uh, Regional Assembly. I think we've covered a good amount of ground. Um, unless there's anything else, I, I, I've i asked everyone on the panel, is there anything the audience wants to talk about? Yeah, yeah, it was a fun time. I see a question from MJ, which says, has the government made any preparations for the election of the WA Secretary General. Um, I can tell you that there was an ideal outcome for that. 
that, as I am to understand it for various reasons, cannot happen. So I think the government is still exploring options at the moment. Yeah, I know you're are... like political answer, but like uh, real. Yeah, no. As as far as I'm aware, there was a discussion yeah. about it. Yeah, uh, we had. Some... I don't know if that was. I don't know if that was in the executive council or somewhere else, but yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. Uh, we had a discussion about it, and uh, we're still looking for an answer to that question because it's very difficult, obviously. But um, what I do know about it is that we're not going to go for a raider. Uh, that's all <laughs> I can say. Now that it's an empowered position, I mean, duh. Yeah. Yeah, we're not we're not going to be doing that. So I'm sure we're going to have like some organized attempts to prevent that, obviously. Uh, but as for who we're supporting, I'm sure that's something that's going to you know be discussed at the time until the election, stuff like that. I will uh, defer to cash mostly. So, anyway, uh, without further ado, uh, thank you to our live audience who joined us today, as well as those listening at some point in the future. Uh, this has been NBS Radio uh, with our lovely panel of Ara, Chipoli, Ruben, and myself. I already said that we were NBS Radio, so we are signing off. Bye. Bye-bye.